Hello there, my Warhammer dogfighting aficionados, and welcome to my apparently perpetually continuous series about the Imperial Navy. Like I promised in my previous video, today we are starting to cover the fighters, bombers, and gunships of the Imperial Navy. We find either one or two of them discussed in every episode, depending on how much lore is available. This time I got lucky and scrounged up enough lore on a single topic, namely the Thunderbolt Heavy Fighter. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about this glorious piece of air power, shall we? The Thunderbolt Heavy Fighter is one of the two main fighter aircraft patterns used by the Imperial Navy, the other one being the Lightning Air Superiority Fighter. The Thunderbolt is the mainstay weapon system of the Imperial Navy fighter wings, and is a rugged, well-armed and well-armored heavy fighter with all-round capabilities, a good maximum speed and above-average maneuverability, a powerful nose-mounted weapon and hard points located on the wings for missiles and bomb loadouts. It is an aircraft that is well-liked by those who fly and service it, and it has served the cause of the Emperor for many millennia. The Thunderbolt's primary combat role is as an air superiority fighter. It seeks out and engages enemy aircraft in dogfights, and hunts down enemy bombers to establish air superiority. The Thunderbolt's greatest strength is its versatility, since it has good performance as a high-altitude escort fighter, while it is also serviceable in the roles of low-altitude fighter-bomber night fighter, or even as a reconnaissance aircraft when necessary. A heavy fighter combining devastating strike potential with a high degree of speed and maneuverability, the Thunderbolt formed the bulk of the Imperialis Armada's intra-atmosphere fighter aircraft during the Great Crusade and Horus Heresy eras. The Thunderbolt was a true workhorse, with a rugged and reliable design, beloved by its crews and feared by its enemies. The Thunderbolt's versatile array of armaments enabled it to tackle all manner of missions, making it ideal for dominating the skies of alien worlds as the Solar Auxilia landed, and supporting them in battle as they advanced. Its most famous characteristic, however, was sheer resilience, and it was not unusual for a Thunderbolt to land riddled with damage that would have destroyed a lesser craft. Like the Lightning, the Thunderbolt is equipped with a Promethium-fueled rocket engine, maneuvering thrusters and an ablative ventral surface. This provides it with a limited trans-atmospheric operations capability. However, this capability was provided only for transportation and deployment from an Imperial Navy starship into a planetary atmosphere, and was not intended for space combat. This means the Thunderbolt is not a true starfighter, a role which is normally filled by the Fury Space Superiority Fighter. The rocket engine and thrusters allows a Thunderbolt to deploy from an Imperial Navy starship in low planetary orbit into the atmosphere. It can then be used at the end of combat operations to allow a Thunderbolt to return to its mothership. Because of this operational capacity in a vacuum, all Thunderbolt pilots are required to wear full, vacuum-sealed flight suits and helmets. The fighter's rocket engine is also used to allow the Thunderbolt to make extremely rapid launch rail takeoffs from its mothership or a ground base. Once airborne using the rocket, the Thunderbolt engages its turbofans. Imperial Navy Thunderbolt wings, like other fighter groups, can possess a wide variability in the number of aircraft or starfighters they contain. They normally consist of between 10 to 20 aircraft, although some are much larger. Each Imperial fighter wing, in addition to the numerical designator, also takes a name that is usually that of a real or mythological flying creature. The Thunderbolt's main armament is carried in its blunt nose with the gun barrels protruding and consists of two sets of twin-linked autocannons that are fire-linked together, with two on each side, and a set of twin-linked LAS cannons on its forward dorsal area. Compared with the Lightning's single autocannon and two LAS cannons, the Thunderbolt is obviously capable of a much higher total rate of fire and a much greater volume of fire. 
This results in the thunderbolt being capable of inflicting substantially more damage than its smaller cousin. The last cannons are primarily used in the fighter's ground attack role to punch through the enemy armor of enemy vehicles. While the autocannon are the kinetic weapon of choice for strafing enemy infantry formations and dogfighting. The heavy fighter can also carry six tactical bombs, four air to surface hell strike missiles, or six air to air sky strike missiles on its external wing mounted hardpoints, without sacrificing the use of any of its main weapons. A Thunderbolt already has an unusually long operational range for a heavy fighter, but when the situation or mission parameters calls for it, a Thunderbolt can be outfitted with external Promethean fuel drop tanks for increased range. The Thunderbolt has a heavy rectangular fuselage rather than a more streamlined tubular body, which is flanked by a thrust tunnel containing a large turbofan jet engine on either side of the aircraft. The wings are mounted on the thrust panels and very slightly forward swept. The angular cockpit is set about halfway down the fighter, with the remaining back half dominated by the tail section, complete with two tail planes and a single tail fin. The whole of the Thunderbolt is armored with a 45mm ceramite armor plate. Being a larger and heavier airframe than the Lightning, the Thunderbolt is obviously slower and less maneuverable. Thunderbolts are most commonly used in an air superiority role, where they can intercept enemy aircraft and engage in dogfights with them. Thunderbolts are especially effective against enemy bombers, as their large weapons array can punch through bombers' usually heavy armor, and Thunderbolt armor can withstand, to a certain degree, the withering fire of bombers' multiple turrets better than its counterpart, the Lightning Fighter. Because of its versatility, the Thunderbolt is also deployed as close air support for Imperial Guard or even Space Marine units. A couple of notable variants of this aircraft include The Kestrel Class Interceptor This is a Void-capable version of the Thunderbolt Heavy Fighter and was used by Battlefleet Demeter against the Black Legion's incursion into the Pandarax system. This version drops the Thunderbolt's standard autocannon armament in lieu for additional energy cells for its last cannons. In order to operate in the void of space, the flyer is not propelled by regular combustion engines, but instead a power cell-fueled power plant, whose output can also be directed to supercharge its weapons. While being a void-capable vessel, it still retains some features of its forebear out of respect for the Omnissiah chief among them being an ejector seat with a built-in parachute, a tail rudder, and the hydraulic wing flaps which are only needed for atmospheric flight. The Cypramundi Pattern This is actually the name given to the basic and most widespread template of the Thunderbolt in use by the Imperial Navy. Additionally, a few famous Thunderbolt wings include The 83rd Imperial Navy Fighter Wing Eagle Squadron. They served on the desert world of Quatara Prime and during the Taurus Campaign. The 386th Falcon Squadron. They served during the Taurus Campaign. The 409th Raptor Squadron. They served on Enophis during the Sabbat World's Crusade. The 490th Wyvern Squadron. They served during the Third War for Armageddon the 672nd Imperial Navy Fighter Wing, Dragon Squadron. They served in the campaign to recover Rin's world from the Orcs of Wa Snagrod, commanded by the famous Imperial Ace Flight Commander Richter Dagor Yanni. The 717th Imperial Navy Fighter Wing. They served during the Siege of Vrax. The 1019th Fighter Wing. They served during the infamous Black Week on Taifa IV against the Tau. The 1303rd Serpent Squadron. They served on the ocean world of Tirama Secundus. The 1922nd. They served during the raid on Castorel Novum. The 3659th Harrier Squadron. They fought against the Eldar on the world of Lamas. The 5th Kulan Imperial Navy Fighter Wing. They served during the Sabbat World's Crusade. 
the 101st Imperial Navy Pacificus Elite Wing. The loaded apostles are the elite fighter squadrons of the Imperial Navy. The 101st Apostles served during the Sabbat World's Crusade and distinguished itself on the world of Inophis. And lastly, a few numbers and stats for this aircraft. The Forge World of Origin is Cypramundi. There are 21 known patterns. Its weight is 14 tons when empty. Its length is 14.2 meters. Its wingspan is 16 meters. Its height is 3.5 meters with landing gear down. Its operational ceiling is 39,000 meters. Its maximum speed is 2200 kilometers per hour. Its range is 12,000 kilometers in atmosphere. Its main armament consists of nose mounted twin linked LAS cannons and two nose mounted twin linked autocannons. Its secondary armament consists of four Hellstrike missiles, and six tactical bombs. Its armor for superstructure and hull is 45 millimeters. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Imperial Navy's Thunderbolt Heavy Fighter. Would you enjoy piloting one of these, or would you rather have the faster and more maneuverable Lightning Fighter? You can discuss and let me know in the comments below. Was this video useful or entertaining to you? In that case, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing for future videos. I thank you kindly for watching and wish you all a great day. The Emperor Protects.